watching over the years what Drew Brees likes to do as he throws and then watching how Dallas kind of knocked him off his rhythm, how important will it be for, for you guys to get more vertical pressure this week, maybe even more so than around the edge? Well, I think the biggest thing is they, they showed how important it was. You know, Dallas showed it, Tampa Bay showed it, uh, the Rams in the second half showed it. I mean, it, it, but it's, it's, you know, it's not anything that people don't know. Is there anything to, like, seeing a blueprint when a, when a team like Dallas meets the Saints in kind of the fashion they did and limits what their offense can do, or, or is it just... Well, I mean, there is a blueprint. I mean, people do talk about it, but, you know, there's, there's, there's you know, obviously what will happen is when something like that happens, you go back, you evaluate it, and you, you, you try and correct it or fix it. And I imagine that's probably what they've done uh, in New Orleans, that they've had a chance to look at that tape and figure out what happened. Ron, was Golden's absence related at all to the tweet he sent out? No, not that I know of, and I don't know of anything about a tweet other than he was sick, went and saw the doctor, they gave him some medicine and sent him home. Ron, uh, first half over second half, uh, second half against Cleveland, it looked like the, again, the vertical pressure was causing Baker to move his feet quite a bit um, in the pocket. What were some adjustments that you made um, at halftime to maybe increase that, that pressure on him? Well, you know, I, I don't think there was, you know, a lot, lot more to it that, other than the fact that we kept him in the pocket. We kept him contained more so than anything else. If you go back and look at the second touchdown pass he threw, unfortunately he broke contain. You know, the defensive backs where they were supposed to be, the, you know, everybody underneath coverage where he should have been. And, and I mean, he just hauled back and threw a high one. And, and their guy made the play. We missed it. Um, but the biggest problem there, more than anything else, was he broke contain. Um, and it's, it's very similar to what happened to us against uh, Tampa Bay when Jameis broke contain. You know, you give co quarterbacks an opportunity to buy a little more time, you know, they're going to beat you. And that's really what happened with that. Um, as far as Cleveland was concerned, I, I like what we were doing. I, I thought we got pressure early in the first half. In the second half, we got pressure. It's just unfortunate that uh, you know that one play stands out. Well, Ron, where do you see from what you changed John made from last year to the issue of personnel-wise, better prepared you guys to, to face the Saints? Well, I I I, I do like um, you know the pe personnel we have. I, I think we have the potential to score points on the offensive side. You know we um, you know we we we've done a fairly good job and. Certain situations, as far as uh, the offense is concerned, moving the ball. Uh, defensively, I like the personnel we have. We just can't give up big plays, explosive plays, and that's really what's you know been kind of the crux of the last few games we've had. Ron, from your perspective, how much more prepared do you think was Ian Thomas for this start than he was his first start? I think he was very mu much more prepared, very much more. That's real good English. Uh, I think it was, he was very prepared. I think a big part of it is just the fact that he started you know those first few games until Greg got back. Uh, he got a lot of on-field experience. And then he got a chance to step back and look and evaluate, and I think that's really helped him grow in terms of understanding what our offense is all about, uh, what the position calls for. Um, you know, you watch his, his some of his route running his first few games compared to the way he ran the routes against Cleveland and the way he practices. Like today, he practiced very well. Um, so when you get a chance to really spotlight and see the things that he's done, you've seen the growth that he's made already. Um, so it's pretty exciting to, to what his potential could be. From the Cleveland game, was there any route that, that stands out in your mind or any play you made that stands out in your mind as a, I guess, a representation of his progression? Um, yeah, there was one, the one that he caught up on the sideline. You could see him get up field quickly. And then, you know, he presented a good target to the quarterback when he turned. And a lot of it is that, you know, that, that the, comp, the, the confidence a quarterback has when he sees the guy present, you know, a target that says, hey, Throw it near me, I'm going to catch it. And, and I think that's where he's getting to that uh, as far as those things are concerned. You guys, you talked a few times this year about standing pat at the B&A, Marty standing pat, maybe causing a little jitters elsewhere uh, when guys were, were maybe coveted by other teams, especially Ian Thomas um, drew a lot of interest, it sounded like. Were, were the Saints a team that were, were interested in kind of making a move to potentially get Ian Thomas? I, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, as far as that stuff's concerned, I know um, I know a couple other teams that were that that you know that I talked with, you know, their head coaches, and and they all said the same things. Oh, we really like that kid. We thought you know we could get him here and get him there, and you know it, it does show you how how certain people value certain positions or certain players. Uh, but it was just interesting to hear their their perspective on you know what they thought about his 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 athletic ability. Um, and it's interesting because, again, he was really an unknown co commodity just because of the fact he only played one year of major college football, you know, two years in junior college and then one major. And uh, so he kind of hit on the scene. It, was, it made a nice little splash.
Ron, we heard a lot from Cam about uh, the, of course the line that Cam Jordan sent him, and he revealed that uh, someone, a fan or, or maybe a player, sent him a broom from New Orleans. To, what do you know about that? And, and any thoughts on that? I have no thoughts on that. I mean, that was last year, and it's a new season. You know, each season has its own personality. He called it disrespectful, and that I mean, it's the kind well, of thing your guys can maybe get a chip with. Well, you know, whether it does or doesn't, that, that to me is inconsequential. What's consequential is that we're preparing and getting ready to play a football game on Monday night. I mean, it's, you know, that's about all I can say on that. We you year over year about what it takes to contain Alvin Kamara, not just as a runner, but you know, as one of their top targeted receivers? Well, I think the biggest thing more than anything else is wherever he is, you've got to make sure you have population around him. I, I, again, players that are explosive, players that are playmakers, you, you've got to at least have an eye on them and have a feel for where they are. And once they get the ball, you, you know, they've got to get to the football. Do you like the way that the schedule shook out with three divisional opponents near the end of the year? Yeah, I think that's cool. I just, I just wish, you know, I've never been a fan of playing a, a team even when I played back in the day, I've never been a, a fan of playing a divisional team, uh, you know, th you know, a game later. You know, I've never been a fan of that. I mean, I, I have no issue with the scheduling of three divisional in a row, um, but, you know, I just, I've never been a fan of it. I mean, if I was watching it on TV, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be thrilled about it, but, you know, that's, I don't make the schedule. It's not, it's not up to me. Do you have to change your game plan from week, I mean, obviously you change your game plan every week, but when you play the same team twice in three weeks, is it even that much more of a change? Uh, well, it just depends. If it works, we'll see. <laughs> Ron, um, guys in the locker room said morale was high. Dante Jackson described it specifically as great. What have you seen in practice? Um, I thought they practiced well. I thought the tempo was really good. Um, we finished uh, probably about, uh, I think it was about eight minutes ahead of schedule. Um, we, had, we had good rhythm. I thought the guys practiced hard. You know, it's kind of been indicative. I mean, it's, it's kind of been the way we've done things. Uh, we've always practiced well. Um, you know, even my first two years, even in the 2014 year, the 2016 year, um, I think our guys understand what it takes, and we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, it's a big game for us. We have an opportunity. It's in front of us. You know, the challenge is whether or not we can get it done. Um, but I do believe in our guys. I like our guys, and I like the way we came out today and ready to roll. Well, what do you think it says about Saints management, um, organization, that they stood behind Sean Payton after three straight seven and nine seasons? Well, I, I think the one thing that you look at organizations that, you know, have, have been very consistent with their personnel, and I think that's really important. I think that, um, you know, if, if, you, if you've had success before, um, and you think you have the right formula, yeah, why not? Um, you know, it's, you, you look at you know, some, some organizations that have changed head coaches time and time again. Um, they seem to struggle. Um, you know, Pittsburgh comes to mind because you think that, you know, since Chunk Knoll, they've only had three head coaches. Um, so, again, I, I think when you look at things, it's about continuity, um, you know. And, and I'll tell you a great example. We, you know, we suffered a little loss of continuity this year. You know, with, with changing coordinators again, and really on the defensive side, having somebody at a new position you know, on that whole group. Anything else? Ron, I think we saw Chris Clark at the end of the first half Sunday get a little shaken up. Is that why he's on? Yeah, I think that has a little residual to it, Joe. I, I think today we wanted to give him a rest and see how he is. You know, he had a couple extra, he had an extra day off. Um, so we just wanted to see how he is today, and we'll see how he responds to the work that he did out there on the field on the side. Uh, tomorrow morning, but um, you know we're expecting to be ready to roll. But we just wanted to make sure, and RV thought this would be good for him. If we haven't seen Matt Khalil out there practicing yet, is it unlikely we see him the rest of this year? I couldn't tell you that, other than what the doctors have to say. Um, you know, he does his rehab stuff with them in, inside, um, and we'll see. Would you have expected him? I know initially the hope was. He could return from IR, but mm -hmm. obviously it didn't work out that Well, as of right now, no. You know, and we'll, again, like I said, we'll see what the doctors have to say. Ron, you said going into last week's game that you felt like you guys were well prepared for that game yep. and then things just didn't stick. Is there anything you could do or you guys can talk about differently to make sure that that game plan actually comes to? Well, I, would, I, I think if you look at the numbers, you know, and again, I'm one of those people that say figures lie and liars figure. But the numbers tell us that the game planning wasn't as bad as, as I think you, you guys make it out to be, or this question, in my opinion, makes it out to be. I thought our guys came out and played pretty well. Now, we did give up a couple of plays, and that's the, 
the problem with football when you lose. It, it's a matter of place. We didn't make a play. They made a play. That's the truth of the matter. So, again, I think our guys did a nice job preparing. I think they did the things they needed to do to, to, to get ready to play a football game. Unfortunately, we made some mistakes. Um, I probably could have made a couple of better calls to put them in better position. But at the end of the day, I, th I thought if you looked at the numbers, it tells you different. So what we have to do more so than anything else is we can't go out and make mistakes. And like I said, i got to make sure we as coaches are putting them in the best position to have success. From a technique standpoint, is there something that you can – do to help the corners guard against the pump fake that Drew Brees is Well, the thing that they have to do is they have to be patient and they got to be disciplined more so than anything else. One of the things that we told them is that this, you have to play discipline. He's very good at what he does, and there's a reason why he's going to be a Hall of Famer first ballot for sure. Uh, you've got to play uh, your technique, you've got to play discipline, and you've got to do the things that you should be doing uh, based on the defenses that are called. Thanks, guys. I All right, it. cool. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you.